Good morning. It looks like God's people are covered with a lot of shame and reproach. Why is that? We're at Jeremiah chapter 3 now. We're at uh, the last part of verse 22 to the end of chapter 3. That's verse 25. Let's read. Indeed, we do come to you, for you are the Lord our God. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. For shame has devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth, their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters. We lie down in our shame, and our reproach covers us. For we have sinned against the Lord our God, we and our fathers, from our youth even to this day, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. So this prophecy adds further pleas for repentance. And there is no hope of salvation from the high places, as because what we're talking about here is idolatry, people worshiping false gods up on the heights, which is the way they used to do it. And they've gone up to the heights to their fake gods, and they're... Uh, pleading with them, maybe making sacrifices and different things to them, but all it's all going to come to nothing because these false gods are false. There's nobody there. There's no personal being that they're talking to. There's no real real gods there. They're just they're just rocks and and uh, you know wooden blocks overlaid with some some silver or gold. So so it's it's nothingness. And uh, but these people have a lot invested in their false idols, don't they? And it's kind of that gambler's fallacy you've probably heard of. You know, you think that if you've g spent so much time there that surely your luck will turn. And maybe these people are thinking, you know, we're just going to double down here because these false gods we're serving, they don't think of them as false gods. And they think, well, if we appease them, if we just appease them a little bit more, the, the situation's going to turn and these gods are going to favor us. But they won't favor them because there's nothing there. There's nobody on the other end of that phone line. They're, they're talking to, to thin air. There's, no, there's nothing among those false gods. Maybe some demons hanging out. Turning to false gods has utterly hollowed out the spirituality of God's people. But that's what they're doing, and so they're now hoping that, that God will come. Now here's, a, uh, here's what we have here is kind of a suggested, th these verses suggest a, a response that God's people should have. They should repent. They should say, Lord, we have sinned. They should just openly admit it completely and throw themselves in God's mercy. And you know, that, that is what they should do. And God would be merciful to them. Most people aren't going to turn back until they are really crunched. So we can avoid that brick wall, head in the brick wall approach if we'll just look to the Lord God. He doesn't want us to have to do it that way. He doesn't want us to have to learn that way. And some people are so stubborn that they, uh, they will not learn even that way. So in Jeremiah's time, they did this with wood and stone. But what about in our time? What are the, our idols today? come back to this idea from time to time. And you know, we, we think somehow we've advanced, you know, we don't have idols like those guys, those silly people worshiping those crazy idols. And yet, we do. We have much more subtle forms. We worship ideas in the secular religions. Solomon already tried all this materialism stuff. It was empty. And it's empty for us. The people around us, they need more. And we need to be the conduit to show them that a personal walk with the living God is more. There is only one true God. Let's pray to him. Dear Father in heaven, it makes a difference that there are angels, good and bad, that you are a God who is looking at my life. It makes a difference that I'm talking to you, hoping in you, trusting in you. It makes a difference for us as we live our day-by-day -day lives to recognize that, that we see only in part, but you see fully. We see the material world, but there are many things happening that are not things we see with our eyes. We serve a living God. Thank you, Lord, that you are there. We want to be right today. We want you to guide us. We want you to help us take the right steps so that we can be a help and a service to your kingdom. Thank you for your goodness. Lord, there are people all around us. Perhaps even some of us in certain respects have been worshiping false gods. Lord, please help us to repent, help us to see, help us to turn Help us to look to you, Lord. There is no help from the heights that we would go to, but there are, is help from, from you, Lord, in the heavenly heights. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us double-check ourselves and make sure that we're not worshiping false idols or those kinds of things, even subtly. God be with you today in all that you do.